everyone. Today we have Sherry with us. She has a very interesting story. She's a self-taught programmer, a software developer, and she self-taught machine learning and quantum computing, which is unheard of. I've heard a lot of people who learn coding themselves, but machine learning and quantum computing are very complex topics from what I know. So I'm very interested to know and very curious to know, know the journey. She's also an entrepreneur, has a startup. So again, very awesome that you are here with us. Thank you for coming over. And you might already know her because she's very famous on Instagram. So, <laughs> yes. Uh, so let's get into it, right? Tell us something about yourself. Like Kritika and I, we both, both of us followed a very traditional path, right? We both went to college, we did our degree, we, you know, did our master's, got a job. So it was very traditional, but you were sent the boring from, path. The boring path, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so we would <laughs> love to know fun. more. Like, how do you, why did you get into software engineering? How did you self self, you know, teach yourself these yes. different domains. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Sherry. Um, so I'm a self-taught software engineer, as you guys probably know that already, like all of us, like, it's been a while. And then, so what should I say? So I started coding like five, six years ago. The, so I started with like YouTube and Udemy because, you know, they have, they have cheap courses and free yeah, courses. Yeah, they're awesome. Yeah, yeah, like they have, they basically have everything that you need to study, you don't, you know, and I just keep learning that for like a year and then I do my, like my, my, my free time and then I apply for jobs and then I got a job, which is like, like the, like the, the, the journey sounds like there's nothing, but there's actually a lot of things going on in there. But yeah, like, so, and then I started to post on social media to, to tell people that you can actually self-taught. You know, you don't have to go to college if you don't have money, you know what I mean? So I, that's what I've been doing until today. And then I'm also an entrepreneur. I have a startup with my team. And then I'm not a pro in quantum computing because that's not possible. I mean, like, mm -hmm. I'm just learning for fun, you know? Like, right. Yeah, like in terms of machine learning, I've been trying to learn that. And again, you can find resources online everywhere. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Um, Courses are free. Courses are cheap. Everything is on YouTube. And if it's only about passion, if you love that, and then you just go for it. That That's is true. Absolutely true. Right. Both of us, when we were, I remember we were in, studying in Concordia University in Montreal, and we tried to start, you know, finding internships or jobs. And I remember we did the same thing. We went to Udemy. We bought a course by Andre Negoy. We bought a course by, it was, I think, Maximilian, someone, right? <laughs> so so I think they are the most famous ones. And because in universities, they teach us basic programming and obviously advanced stuff as well, but they don't teach you maybe what is uh, in the job market right now, right? They won't teach Angular or React or maybe Python or some like data science related things. So I think all of us have done plenty of Udemy courses to say that it is awesome. And obviously YouTube, like there's so many uh, resources there. So that is awesome. Mm -hmm. So I'm very curious. So you said that you started learning programming six years back. So, but, but there's like so many different choices available today. Why do you pick, why did you pick programming or, you know, machine learning per se? What motivated you? So at that time, self-teaching programming is not a thing. Like people wouldn't want to do that. And then it's just not possible. So, and then I have no, no choice. I don't want to go back to college again. So I have to you know, start from something free because I started to learn HTML, CSS, right? because that's like the most easiest one to get into tech. And then I started to learn about JavaScript, which is a hell for me. Like, I don't know about algorithms and stuff. It's just hard for me. It's just difficult to understand like the steps and logic and stuff. But I think the key is like, you have to keep practicing it over and over and over and over again. Right. But now I'm working... I was working as like a, a front end people and then gradually switching into software engineering, which is more on, on the back end side. Cause right. I hate front end <laughs> you know, designing <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Seriously, I'm terrible in that. Yeah. That's what's going on so far. That is common between you and Kritika. Kritika also hates front end. Like, I, I was, oh my God. Yeah. I was gonna say, Pranav's not gonna like this statement because he, <laughs> oh my God, he loves front end. And mm -hmm. I, on the other hand, yeah, I mean, 
he likes like he does both of both front end and back end but yeah. i mean he did front end more i'd say for a longer time mm. and that's why like i mean if you're good at something you obviously love it you know like yeah. that's the kind of thing <laughs> i i remember like Krit- kritika was like i don't want to change another button color or change the day or handle yeah. css like it was like it is annoying and i remember when i was working only with front end i was annoyed as well like i did not want to do it. i wanted to work on you know more logical things and you know because when you are in front end you also interact a lot with non technical people and a lot of developers yeah. you know don't enjoy that because someone from marketing <laughs> or sales can just come and say hey why don't you build the page like this and yeah. you know it takes time it it's not that easy so that maybe yeah. that maybe adds to some frustration there yeah you have to deal with some it's just people designer and then you're like when they when they have like a crazy thing to 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 design and then you have to build that seriously no yeah <laughs> and also like when you're working in the front end another thing is as pranav already mentioned that you have to deal with a lot of non tech people and that's why it becomes so challenging to understand the real requirements you know yeah. like to yeah. to deliver what they really want that's yeah. like yeah. one big challenge that i found in front end yeah absolutely so when you were learning yourself right you were maybe good doing going through a youtube video or a udemy course i know that today we have a lot of self taught engineers and developers and they're doing great but did you find any challenges in finding a job because when i go to linkedin today i see a lot of jobs that say minimum requirements is a college degree or a diploma or you know sometimes a masters degree so did it like did you feel a challenge or was it straightforward and simple So I think it's easier for you to find a job if you are self taught just look for the some small company small agency or startup that's the most easiest way to get you started of course like it's difficult i i apply for like tons and tons and tons but then i got no reply because the first thing they need is a bachelor degree in computer science which yeah. i don't have that it's definitely difficult but if you are applying for like small agency or startup you know they are more people oriented so they will see you as people you know what i mean like they don't go through everything and they just chuck you chuck your things and just you know so they will actually look at your your resume pr- pr- properly because you know they don't have a lot and then i think the most important thing is you need to get yourself prepared like you need to work harder than anyone else you need to have more quality just make yourself more qualified than other people that than other graduates Absolutely, from yeah. school yeah absolutely this and, and like this is what kritika and i always say that you should have maybe you know try to have a github profile or a, a few yeah. self made projects that you have links to that you can show to someone now if someone is in maybe you know machine learning maybe they they, they can't create like websites very quickly mm-hmm. like it, it might be more time consuming but something that you can show to others will definitely always help yeah yeah and, absolutely and also like like the um search like if you are going to apply for a back end developer just go and learn just go and get some certifications from like mongodb you know like they have a courses people don't you know understand that you can be you can be a student from college or you can be a self taught but you have to apply sometimes to a lot of jobs it's very rare that you apply to one job and you get it right like oh. even like we follow the traditional path but i had to apply i remember more than 100 companies with the if we, if we count the internships as well it was <laughs> it was not it's very hard easy. honestly yeah the job hunt it, no matter like if you're a university graduate or a self taught it is hard and also mm-hmm. like now they have the companies have like such sophisticated tools like the ats systems the automated you know like mm-hmm. the testing systems that they have so like you have to have no matter how good you are how good your profile is if you don't have these certain keywords in your resume mm-hmm. a machine yeah. is going to reject that right yeah. you're not even your resume is not even going to go get through to you know like a hiring manager or someone yeah. like you won't even get to prove yourself like in an interview because the machine is rejecting you so like you need to be i mean today you need to be like really clever to work out ways to build a smart resume i believe yeah yeah sometimes i was just thinking like you know like we are doing tech you know why do we have to have a skills to write resume what is, <laughs> why is that even for <laughs> is that important for the market or what Right? Absolutely, yeah. but but it is like it is <laughs> important. Like Kritika and I learned the hard way that that you know we we had to do it. 
but yeah like initially we didn't give it much, much attention right and yeah. after getting a lot of rejections and i remember even when i was in india some of my friends who got the job very quickly they did not develop as much as many skills the the guys or the girls who got rejected by 10 companies and they went to interviews they knew so much more by the end because now they know what the interview is going to ask because they have so yeah. much more experience and yeah. they were learning so many things so person who found a job stop learning stop going to youtube stop go, stop going to udemy didn't learn anything new but people who were not hired it's not that they were unskilled but they just didn't get hired and they were still learning still doing things and by the end of our college degree they knew so much more and they got better job offers so m- maybe getting rejected is not the worst thing it can help you guys <laughs> in yeah like like if you get you know it's it's not about how how terrible your skills are cuz you know they don't they don't know you it's not about how terrible you are if you didn't get a job it's just about them it's not it's not mostly about you but it's mostly about them so you just Absolutely. have to learn the skills how to improve your interview how to improve your your skills and stuff at the end of the day it's true right like i mean whatever field you're working in be it tech but i mean it's you know like the image that they portray on internet mm-hmm. and everyone that a coder is someone who wears their hoodie and then they're on their like table coding like in a dark room not interacting mm-hmm. with anyone with music on and stuff like it's it mm-hmm. that is not always true right you have to work in a team you have to develop certain skills you have to work on your soft skills soft skills are like equally important as mm-hmm. your technical skills so yeah i mean uh, you have to take care of all those points yeah like you have to communicate with your team every single day <laughs> right exactly Absolutely. like your team your managers and like yeah. other non tech people as well yeah. to build a good rapport with them to work together you know like in yeah. a non toxic non hostile environment <laughs> try not to be toxic <laughs> exactly to be happy at your job so yeah yeah, yeah. I mean we don't as beginners we don't expect this right I mean for mm-hmm. us like programming and tech and software engineering is like just you know learning to code learning how to apply logic yeah. and stuff but like with experience you get to know how important these soft skills and like these other things are as well yeah which they didn't really teach that in school I think exactly Not that that, that yeah. as well yeah that as well so as i mentioned before I remember when we were chatting like when you learn something in school it's totally different it's a whole other experience yeah. of when you come yeah. in the outside world and you start to apply it yeah yeah like you have to learn from the out- outside world instead of in school it's just being forced got to go out and just learn it yeah. and i know that like everyone in, in you know because i'm from india and now we are in montreal everyone in india or canada are very attracted to you know to bay area because that's where all the companies are you know microsoft google amazon yeah. they all have offices there apple and uh, uber so many great companies so it, it, do we have a similar similar culture in uh, like uh, in your country in malaysia like is is going to us considered as you know you're you're working finally in tech because that's what kritika and i also talk about sometimes we are like mm-hmm. we're in canada but it's you know it's not us maybe we should go <laughs> and 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 the, work for the american dream eh? yeah yeah I think that's like the goal for every programmer or every tech people. They just want to go to the valley, you know, yeah. because that's the 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 biggest goal. Like, where can you go af- after that? There's no more places to go. Like, they have Absolutely. everything you need. <laughs> Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, every every company is in that area. Yeah, Your, absolutely. Yeah. Netflix, Uber, like unlimited number of companies. Like there's yeah. so every company that we use on a day-to-day basis has an office there. So that is yeah. pretty that is pretty amazing. We have a couple of friends who are there and you know they they are pitching us. They are saying that you should come to SF. You know, it's it's mm-hmm. awesome out here. So we are going yeah. there in maybe a couple of weeks we are going there for a short vacation. But yeah, yeah like it's it's the same yeah. thing everywhere. Yeah. Everyone wants to go to the Bay Area. Yeah. So like a short vacation and at the same time trying to find a job. <laughs> <laughs> we can't we can't talk about that. We... <laughs> But it's it's more oh. like a workation. Oh, no, okay. It's more like a yeah. workation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sounds... <laughs> we, we we can't let our current current employers know about that. So that's a secret. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll be quiet. <laughs> 
So I'm, I'm very curious to ask you more questions on, so when you started your journey and you finally got a job, I, I think you first were working in the front end more, right? Then how did you transition? Like, did you, are you still working there or you, you switched or you are completely working on a startup now? So let's uh, talk more about that. Yeah, I have, I quit my job maybe a year and a half ago to work on my thing, because if you have a startup, you just, you just have to focus on that because you seriously don't have the energy and time to work two jobs. I, I try to work part-time for my job, but for my uh, startup and then full-time for my job while doing mm-hmm. freelancing as a developer for two years in Sydney. And then, okay. and then I started to work from home because you know, I, have, I, I, I have come back here and then started to work from home for like two years as well. So we we'll all together like, Three or four years as a software engineer, and then and then like I just become an entrepreneur now. Full-time. That is awesome. Yeah, you're, you're living the dream, and you were doing so many things at once at once. So that that's not easy at all. And how was your experience in Sydney? You know, you went to Australia, a different country, like we yeah. did. How was your experience yeah. there? I absolutely love it. It's a beautiful place, peaceful, and then um, lot like a lot of different things going on around you you meet like different kind of people every single day get yeah. a lot of events going on and like it's i think it's the same as like in in montreal isn't it mm-hmm. it's yeah. true it's going on yeah yeah it's true i'm very surprised you know this much about montreal because i was gonna say this you're <laughs> describing montreal right now i mean we have a lot of yeah. things happening here like always yeah. no matter what time of the day it is no matter what day of the week it is you go out and yeah. there's always something yeah. happening yeah, yeah. and you're yeah. saying it perfectly right in the french accent i think Mon- yeah. montreal. montreal exactly montreal. <laughs> the r <Exactly>. right. <laughs> we can do that <laughs> After six years here, maybe six... we should we should work on that a little bit. We should work. Yeah. Yeah. The accent, the art. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So yeah, since we're talking about your startup, so tell us something about Sornex, <laughs> right? That's if I'm pronouncing it right. Yeah. Sornex. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us something about Sornex. I I saw one of your YouTube videos on it. It's a social media. It's a, like an online chat platform, yeah. but uh, what else can you do with it? And like, what motivated you to build uh, this system? So as a content creator, I've, I found that I need a lot of things going. Uh, I, I need to use a lot of applications and then they are all over the places. So Sonic is like a community platform where we provide a lot of tools for you to do, to do things in one place. So you don't have to, like what you guys have, have said like just now about, you have to post this here and you have to post that over there and then they have to put this here and then they put that over there. And you have to organize every single, like everything in, in everywhere. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it just, you know a pain, yeah. <laughs> it's just a headache. And then I like, sometimes you don't have the time to go to like Instagram and you have to look at your analytics and then you have to go to YouTube, what like, you know what to do over there and then you have to send your email about your your subscription thingy and then you have to basically manage everything in in everywhere so my goal our like our goal is to put everything in one place so you, you will have one place to organize your community well wow. that's basically the the core Basically, this is yeah. awesome. And, and are you like, are you running the whole business alone, or you already have employees? Like, so we ha- we are a team of three. So I have two more team members. Awesome. And then wow. yeah, yeah, we have been working on that for like two years. Uh, yeah, two uh, half in one and a half years since I quit my job. And then we just launched the app like two three days ago. Let me show you guys. So, wow. So I want yeah. To check it out. It's still in 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 test flight. So, okay. Uh, oh yeah, you have to test it. Right. Of course. Of course. Absolutely. Th- yeah. This is this is exciting. So you, and your app will be released soon, like everywhere in the world, or you're only will be in uh, in a couple of countries. Everywhere. <laughs> wow. Okay. We would love to try that. It, we would love to try that. Yes. Uh, as fellow content creators, we really understand your pain, <laughs> and we'd love to try this. <laughs> I think it will be very beneficial for us yeah. as well. Like, do you have to pay as well to do a lot of things you know, everywhere? 
that's exciting and uh, yes. like you i'm assuming did you code it yourself in the beginning and then you got more help like built a team around it so tell us more about that so i'm a backend developer so i coded the backend by myself i have helped with some uh, other people as well but just like a tiny minor thing but mm-hmm. mostly of the application i built that from scratch from nothing <laughs> to this one yeah but then i have two team members which is they are working on the front end because i told you guys i cannot do front end <laughs> at all <laughs> we know how much you love front end <laughs> <laughs> yes love it yeah i um, know yeah they they are they are doing the app thingy so they built the app i'm just responsible for the back end side the the back end the depths of and the database thingy wow yeah so first of all i want to congratulate you it's not easy to build anything from scratch right mm-hmm. and working for a company and then building something it is so much more easier because someone is telling you what to do someone is giving you designs and you know you have yeah. support you can yeah. talk to other people and you you are disciplined you have to work 30 to 40 hours every single week so how did you like how when you're working for someone right when you're working for a company that's you know the minimum that you have to do so the discipline automatically comes in so how were you able to you know keep that discipline like if someone wants to create their own company code coded from beginning or just just a hobby project for the resume like how can how can they learn from you if they want to start their own startup you mean like their own thing yeah their own thing that they have to code from scratch or simply just a hobby project we get so many requests on instagram saying yeah. i don't know what to create i don't i don't know how good it should be so uh, even for the resume so uh, it's it's not easy for someone to build something from scratch cuz if you wanted to build something it's all about what you i think it's a very different perspective if you're building a startup it's all about solving a problem but if you're building a project it's all about what you like So if you have to think about some project ideas and stuff it's all about what kind of things you like to build and then you just build that. And then if you have the passion like the passion to build that you will continue to build that every single day for like 24/7. You will be disciplined without anyone forcing you to do stuff. Um yeah, I think what they need to have is just be passionate about coding be passionate about building things cuz if you have passion you basically do anything without having any troubles it's about yeah. passion yeah yeah i agree and also a very important thing for me to like have a goal and to achieve something is to have a why you know like yeah. why do you want to build yeah. this why yeah. are you working on it so when the time gets tough and you know like you you don't have the motivation to I mean continue what you're working on mm-hmm. you still have that why with you that motivates you you know like that's the thing I mean yeah. again like you're doing you're, you're doing something that I have been struggling with like you know I, I've Kritika and I sometimes you know talk about n- not even a startup but you know having a nice good project that can help other people as well which will help us code you know do everything mm-hmm. from scratch maybe use firebase or something in the cloud that is easier to start and you know do the basic setup with but we have tried it multiple times but we just never gave it enough time we never worked on it enough so seeing you do that it's it's really encouraging so uh, that's awesome i i wish you all the best with your startup and i'm very excited to start using it and so so did you use like nodejs or python for the backend the backend is in python so we okay. use fast api for that because it's uh, simple and clean we don't, we don't need framework for that and then in the front end they are using react native okay yeah. so that helped them maybe build the mobile apps as well with the apps yeah yeah just try and think about like if you have to build ios and android with two yeah. people <laughs> i mean that's crazy maybe in the future but it's not possible for now that's true like a lot of apps can just be created with, with using something like react native or any platform like ionic you code it once and you have all the apps ready like i love those those platforms or those frameworks right react mm-hmm. native ionic i think there are a couple more i'm for, forgetting their names but i i love that because having a web developer if you have a website as well an mm-hmm. android developer and ios developer 
it's yeah. going to cost so much more and for the same work why, why? like maybe the button in, uh, in android would look a little different so why have that yeah. pain when you can uh, do everything in it with a single code base yeah, that yeah, is awesome yeah. mm -hmm. like so we built the application with just zero dollars so we didn't spend anything wow. um except the server fee the server fee and then the apple developer and android thingy that you have to pay before you're launched because you have to pay for that so we basically so a tips for you guys if you're looking for a co-founder just look for tech people because they they will build things and then you don't have to spend anything <laughs> that is true so so how did you find find, find two people like did you hire them somewhere or are they you are you all co-founders yeah we are all co-founder so one of my co-founder is my brother so i just drag him in and then he's awesome. a self-taught as well. So he's a self-taught React and React Native. And then I met the other guy on, on, on Instagram as well, on, on Instagram. So we chat a little bit and then he joined the program and then we got along well. And then we just continue for like two years until today. It's wow, all about awesome. luck. Yeah. So you're, so you're also learning machine learning techniques and, you know, about quantum engineering right now. So are you also applying these principles in your startup? And that is the reason you're learning this or is it just out of uh, interest? Yes, I will like, I will <clears throat> have to implement that to my project. And that's why I'm learning machine learning and stuff. So machine learning, I know you did already did like some videos where you shared resources to learn, to, you know, like learn machine learning from, but I would, I'm going to ask you like, what's your favorite resource? What is the one thing that you use a lot to learn machine learning? After having to use a lot of resources online, I found that books are the best to learn machine learning <laughs> because it's written by experts. You know, those experts, they don't do videos and tutorials. They will really go in depth into some topic that you wouldn't find that you have to dig out online. So I think books are great. Yeah, but online courses are great as well. But I prefer books. So what's the what's your favorite machine learning book that you'd like to recommend, you know, to a new like a beginner programmer? Because machine learning, it's all about understanding the business needs. So you can apply the data and then to put it into your model and stuff. So there'll be a book that I really love, which is Data Science for Business. I already like the name Data Science for Business. I think maybe I'll look into that book and maybe I'll, I'll buy that one. It, it yeah. sounds interesting already. Yeah, it's been here for like since 2013. So okay. that's a... Uh, it's fairly yeah. new. Yeah. 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 That's good. 10 years. And and also like, cause we get a lot of questions on our channel as well regarding machine learning and, you know, like generative AI and all these things mm -hmm. like the hip topics nowadays. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you, so let's say I'm a beginner in, you know, like I, I know programming, but I'm a yeah. beginner in data, right? The whole data mm -hmm. analytics, machine learning, the, this umbrella of computer science. So would you recommend me to learn like something else? before I jump onto machine learning or can I start learning machine learning like directly? I think if you are a software engineer, it's pretty easy to, for you to learn machine learning because it's the same thing, just code. I think one of the challenging thing about for software engineer is the data. So the data analytic part, you have to know how to work with data, what data is important, how to clean data, how to do uh, visualizations because that's the thing we didn't really do a lot you know at our job so i would recommend software engineer to go into data analytics first <clears throat> to have a look how to clean the data <clears throat> how to modify data just basically work around with your data because it's pretty easy for you to go into machine learning mm. after that and yeah. what you're saying about data makes sense. Like if your data is uh, not a hundred percent clean or has some, you know, very edgy yeah. cases, your, your results are obviously going to suffer for that. So that, that makes a lot of sense. And, but do you think machine learning is something that someone who doesn't know programming can simply jump into, or maybe they should learn basic web development back and front and something else first. Cool. I think, I think nowadays we don't really build the machine learning models from scratch anymore because there are a lot of pre-trained models and stuff. 
I would say, because if they have to go into the machine learning field and eventually find a job, first thing first, they have to be good with SQL and data. So data analytics have to be their first choice when they right. wanted to learn. And then they can slowly in learning about coding and algorithm and stuff. So, and then, and then the, the other thing is like data analytics, like beginners, like entry level family job. So you can get a job with that, yeah. without any degree and stuff. Yeah, there are so many would, jobs today for data analysts for sure. Yeah, yeah. I would recommend to go to data first. Yeah, that, yeah. that's also a good point because I know uh, I, ha I had a friend who was interested in machine learning, but it is back maybe seven, maybe eight years back or, or maybe a mm -hmm. little more. And he said that he was surprised that so much math is involved. Like it was very yeah. surprising. And he showed that to me. It was so much calculus that I instantly got scared and I did not <laughs> pursue that. Right. And, and now we have a lot of machine learning models pre-built. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, mathematics would still help a lot, but if mm -hmm. if you if you are not experts, we can still dive into it and then learn learn on the way. Yeah, like what you say, mathematics is another big thing as well because you have to deal with data and then you have to deal with like graph and stuff and calculations. So it's all about mathematics and data. So that's machine learning is all about. Yeah. So when you say mathematics, is it like? So would high school math suffice or do I need to learn like more advanced mathematics or do I need to take an additional course to learn advanced mathematics first before I dive into machine learning? Um, I think we have pretty much learned that in high school already, but you know, it's been like, like five years, six years, 10 years, and then you just forgot about it. So it's great to go through the course, to, to go through some uh, college courses and just to sort of like re refresh your mind a little bit. Hmm. So, so basic know. mathematics, basic addition, subtraction, multiplication is not going to cut it. We have to learn a bit more for sure. Not really, but I, I think it's just sort of like refreshing your mind about what topic is important in machine learning because you didn't know what is important in machine learning, like in hmm. terms of mathematics. So yeah. it's good to go through some courses and then have a look in what math is important. Right. At the same time, you can learn something new as well. Hmm. So. And I'm, I'm also very curious on because you know everything is self taught for you for your brother mm -hmm. and you know you st started you know you found a company and you created the whole thing how do you decide what tech stack you should use right because every company says that some people say react is better some people say angular is better some people say vue is better that's a front end in the back end world we have so much we have java you could you could have used java spring spring boot you could have used node.js mm -hmm. express so many options. Yeah, Python obviously is one of the uh, one of the most more famous ones. So mm -hmm. how did you decide that? And once you decided that, how did you manage all the DevOps? Because that's something people hire experts for and pay thousands of dollars just to you know get get those things working. So that, walk me through a bit, and I'm very curious. Mm -hmm. In terms of the tech stack, I think it's based on personal favorite. I couldn't really say anything because. I love Python and then it's pretty easy to use. So I would just use that in the backend. And then I don't want it to, you know, have like a framework because yeah, you know, like the application will go big. So the framework thing, we just kind of like restrict that. You know what I mean? So, and React as well. React is a good one for the front end. Angular is good for like enterprise um, size um, right, application. Right. I use Vue as well. It's great for like small application as well. I mean, it's pretty powerful. In terms of like the devs of thing, I think that's the thing you have to learn if you are back a developer, isn't it? Like the the devs of the cloud, that's like a combo for you already. If you are a backend or software engineer, you have to learn that no matter what. So you just do it and Google the thing that you don't know and then you just do it. That is true. So which cloud did you end up using? I was um, going to ask this. <laughs> I was actually going to ask this right away. Like, what's your favorite cloud? What are you using? For now, I know like AWS is expensive, <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, so we are now, we are using DigitalOcean. We used Digital Heroku Ocean, okay. before. Yeah. Yeah, we, we used Heroku before, but um, we just wanted to move to DigitalOcean because, um, you know, yeah. the application gets bigger and then it can handle more stuff. Mm -hmm. Maybe AWS, if I have no choice, but <laughs> yeah. 
because the movie is expensive, you know. So yeah. um, I think I yeah. used DigitalOcean for my first company that I ever worked for as a part-time yeah. software developer. I think they had DigitalOcean, and if yeah. I remember, they call their servers droplets, right? Uh, in DigitalOcean, they yeah. have them yeah. for droplets yeah. for that. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember, and so. A lot of people simply jump into AWS. We see on LinkedIn, everyone getting AWS certifications and then Azure, then maybe Google Cloud. So so how did you end up choosing DigitalOcean? I love it. I have used it before, but is it just uh-huh. cost or, uh, or you had previous experience? I think the I used AWS before. So I think most people would jump into AWS is because of the marketing strategy by them. They offer certificates, you know, yeah. but DigitalOcean, they don't have that. So it's all about the marketing thing. AWS, it's a bit complicated. And then they have like, like it's just my personal opinion. I'm not saying about like from everyone. And I totally it's support your for- opinion. Like I <laughs> felt the exact same thing. Like it was very complicated. <laughs> just getting inside yeah. the AWS console, it feels, yeah. or- it feels overwhelming. Yeah, they have like 20, 30 things you can use, which I don't know how to use. But then, and then the other thing is the cost. They have like hidden costs as well. Like you, sometimes you didn't know like, oh, I have this amount to pay. Like where did it come from? But for digital oceans, they would tell you exactly how much you would pay, what have you used and stuff. And then it's simple, it's clean, it's straightforward. That's why I love yeah. digital oceans. I remember you just, you know, put your code there and it, it sends notification. You can connect it to your Slack or anything you're using and it will send you that 75% used, 80% used. Like I remember getting yeah. that, those notifications when I was working for that company. It's bringing yeah. all those memories back. And yeah, DigitalOcean <laughs> digital was yeah. pretty good. And it's the same reason, like, you know, I thought that, okay, let, I'll learn some cloud, right? I, I'm already using cloud technologies in the companies we work for, but I thought maybe I'll get a certification. So I, yeah. then I saw on LinkedIn, everyone was getting AWS. And that was the only reason I said, I'm going to go some other, some other way. I'm not going to get AWS. So yeah. I used Angular a lot. And Angular has a plugin for Firebase. Mm-hmm. So Firebase is a Google Cloud product. So because both Angular is by Google and, and Google Cloud Firebase is by Google. So they are very compatible and have plugins. So I started using that and I saw Google Cloud is so easy. I'm not saying that, you know, that it's, you know, anyone can do it, but if you are from software engineering, it's easier. And I, I started learning that and started in the certification route because there's so much marketing around it, but yeah, you're absolutely right. Even on, even on Instagram, we have so many creators that are talking about AWS all the time. Because that's the marketing stress thing. So it's just marketing. So <laughs> Absolutely true. So did you face did it ever happen that you you chose a technology or a framework or something, anything that, that with your startup and you thought maybe this is not the best and I have to change everything. Did that, that ever happen with you? Oh, yeah. So we used Laravel and PHP before during our oh, first because yeah. I use that for, for my job. And then, you know, we use that for the application. And then, you know, <laughs> if you are to scale, it's very difficult. So, and yes. then we just have no choice. We have to switch to Python. Yeah, to, yeah, we, we, we yeah. have to switch to Python. Yeah. Laravel has Laravel so before. many features that you can simply just read from a database by calling a method or, or write. And, but it's so rigid, it's difficult to customize. That's what I felt with Laravel, right? Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, and it's a huge yeah, yeah, like, library. Yeah, and then it's a huge library with front and with everything you need in one place, which is good, but depends on the situation. <laughs> I, I feel that we have dissected your startup from a programming point of view, like a lot. So like, let me also segue into the project management point of view. Mm-hmm. So you are working like you're a team of three, right? So you also share different tasks and you, you know work in a collaborative environment. So I'm just curious if you use like any project management software to manage or track your tasks. So like Jira or Asana, whatever. Mm-hmm. We're using Trello for tickets because it's free. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then we use Notion to write our core. What are we right now? Telegram for communication. That's basically it. As I as, as I told you guys before, because you know if you want to some like you wanted to do one thing and then you have to go to a lot of places, which mm-hmm. it's just a hectic 
thing. So we just stick to mostly three Telegram, Notions, and, and Trello. Yeah, and so Notion is great. Uh, yeah. It's another company f uh, found in the Bay Area. And so so maybe all three of us will uh, some, someday go there, maybe just for yeah. a vacation and uh, maybe apply <laughs> jobs in, uh, secretly. Yeah, definitely. I think you guys have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Everything is from Bay Area, right? Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Good. So do you also have any courses uh, that you plan on, you know, like posting online or regarding anything like ML or anything else? Yes, I do. But I've been working with that for like a month or two because I have to work on my setup. Sometimes I just don't have the time to work on my course. I'm trying my best to, to work on that, to finish that. Yes, I have a course, but and, um, it's not ready yet because I'm um, it's just like 20% completed, mm. but in the future. <clears throat> yeah, it takes a lot yeah, of time. Like uh, even when we talk about it, just planning what you will teach the whole yeah. 5, 10, 20 hours and then what projects should, should you include and creating yeah. the whole timeline and then actually sitting down and recording each and every video in a structured matter, it definitely takes a lot of time. Yeah. And uh, yeah. And then you have to like edit that, which is Absolutely. a pain as well. Yes. That is <laughs> the story pain. of our life. <laughs> yeah. Developers. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's also fun because in a sense it's it's a new challenge. Cause I know mm -hmm. you know that because Pranav and I are also like planning to launch some courses of ours and we're also like looking into different options. So it's a whole process, you know, it's a journey. So like mm -hmm. since we this decision to launch new courses so now in addition to planning the course the deciding the topic coming up with the the whole timeline and stuff we're also looking into options for you know like where would we post our courses there's so many different options available like what kind of website will we need so like yeah. there's the another resource going on on this and then you know like i mean it, it's a whole journey it's a whole yeah. it's a and a lot of times it's a lot of investment. Obviously, we're investing a lot of time yeah. and with editing, recording, and everything. But also, when you post the course, if you're not posting on Udemy, if you want your own website, we saw that it can cost us anywhere from fifty to two hundred dollars per month just just to have the course online, have our have our website with it. Obviously, yeah. there can be other options. You can create your own, uh, being a developer. But you know, it, it takes obviously more time for yeah. that. So, so it's it's going to be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> like, part. what if, what if? What if you have your own committee on, on the site and then you can push your, your course in there without any things you have to pay? That's what we are working on right now. So you have your committee and then you mm -hmm. can do a lot of things and you have, can put your courses, can put your like newsletter in one place. We don't have to build a website from scratch. Have to use Udemy. Wow. And they charge like 30%, which is just not fair because you work on a course and they take this much money. Right, you know right. I mean? So that's what we're working right now. Yeah. I'm not trying to pitch, but I'm just saying. Right no, now. you, 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 you should cool. pitch. You should pitch. It, it is good. We, we we want to use it and maybe others will as well. Like it's, yeah, it's already, it, sounds it sounds very amazing. cool and very useful, honestly. Yeah. yeah. So, so okay. Kritika, maybe before paying any other website or any other product, we should try, we should try Shira's product. <laughs> I'll we can be your early like beta testers if you <laughs> give us access. <laughs> I'll do my best to push that early. Yeah, awesome, right. awesome. And I also want to now segue into talking about more AI and chat GPT, right? In your startup, did you use chat GPT anywhere to help you plan things or uh, maybe code a little bit? Who doesn't use that nowadays? <laughs> yeah, Absolutely. I use that. Yeah, I use that for planning sometimes from brainstorming coding bugs sometimes but yeah everyone is using ChatGPT now because it's convenient yeah and then i think there'll be more and more people there'll be more and more powerful tools coming up the next next year so and i know that a lot of people say that now that chat gpt is here developers will be useless we get a lot of comments on youtube people are like why are you creating videos? Chat GPT is here. You're going to get fired anyways. Like we, <laughs> we are getting those kind of uh, comments and everything. So I use Chat GPT as well. And I think Kritika and I use it on a daily basis. But mm -hmm. I don't think it is ready yet to just tell it, I want to build a product and it will give out the whole code. That's what people, that's what non-technical people think right now. Let you just ask it a question 
and it will just you know magically give you the whole code for everything in the world so what was your, your experience did does it give you good answers always or so there's a thing in the ai in the ai community like the hallucination <clears throat> so the chat gpt is always producing the ha hallucination response so if you ask them if you ask it to calculate something i don't think you will get a correct answer like 60% of like 70% of it you wouldn't get a correct answer or like the code as well it's not most of the time, I mean, uh, yeah, not, not most of the time, but like sometimes it's not going to work. So you still need software engineer to check, to run the process, to guide the chat GPT. Because without the human, I mean, do you, do, do you trust a machine to build your whole application from scratch without you knowing what's going on inside? Yeah, absolutely. And I remember I, I got a task from a, mm -hmm. a company I was working for, and they said, I, we want you to get the sales for the last 12 months or last 36 months and then mm -hmm. maybe give them a prediction of the next two months. So I, I started maybe, I asked ChatGPT, what library can I use for that? Because I did not want to code everything from scratch. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so I asked ChatGPT and I was using Node.js. So I let it, let it know that I want to use Node.js. So mm -hmm. first three, four responses, totally wrong. I'm not, I'm not saying ChatGPT is bad. Like I love it. But yeah. a lot of people think that it will always give you right answers. So it gave me wrong answers. And then I kept on asking again and again. It gave me finally a name of a library. I checked that library. That library was for Python. I went back to ChatGPT and said, hey, is it a Python library? Do, do, does this have a Node.js version? Mm -hmm. And then it replied, oh, I'm so like something like, I'm so sorry. It is not available yeah. in Node.js. So I was like, why did you give me the <laughs> Python response? <laughs> yeah, I think it is still early to make it work 100% perfect, we still, yeah, it's still producing some weird answers that you don't understand sometimes. Absolutely true. Yeah. Well, and they can get away with that. They do put a, like this big disclaimer on their website when you yeah. go to chat GPT and you start to use that, you have this big caution that, you know, it won't give you a hundred percent correct result all the time. Yeah. So there is a human intervention <laughs> intervention needed to check all the facts before you use this information. So yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah I, I was just gonna say that then there is a lot of hubbub <clears throat> around, you know, like how Chat GPT is gonna replace developers and take our jobs. Mm -hmm. So I, I was just curious, what do you think about it? Like, do you think it's ever gonna happen? And if yes, like how long would it take? Uh, to build such sophisticated generative AI systems? Um, probably not gonna happen in the near future. I'm pretty sure you guys feel that because it's just crazy. Maybe, I'm not sure because you know, who knows? I don't yeah, know. nobody can predict the future, of course, yeah. Yeah, like 10, 20 years, you know, once we have quantum computing, yeah, I was reading about a quantum computing article. I, it was so far back, I don't remember, but it was like, it is, you know, um, I want to say like how many thousand times faster than the supercomputer available today. Like it was crazy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it is, well, not hard to say, but it is possible, but not in the next 10 or 15 years. Okay, yeah. 10, 15 years. We still have time, Kritika. Let, let's save some money before that happens, okay? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's very hard to say, you know, like the AI thing. Cause, That's yeah. obviously true. It's getting better, right? It's a tool. Right now, I feel like it's a tool that everyone should use because it will help mm -hmm. us or help everyone be a little bit faster. You can be a lawyer. You can be anyone working in any industry. If you just use it as a tool and ask it some for, for some advice or just if you're writing an email, sometimes what I do is I put yeah. the email in chat GPT and ask it, can you make this a, a bit, you know, a bit better or something? So yeah. overall, it can help us a lot. Will it replace us soon? Maybe not right now, but it's, it's definitely a, a good tool to use. Yeah, yeah. Like they have a saying, say like AI will not kill we not kill your job, but people who use AI will. <laughs> True. If you use it as a co-pilot, you know, like to help you with your job, you're obviously much more efficient and smarter than someone who's not using yeah. it. Yeah. So it makes sense. Yeah. Like nowadays, people love to start to do things from scratch. They want to go the hard way. I mean, if you can go on like an, an easiest path, just go for it. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you don't have to do things alone by yourself. Totally. Yeah. Why reinvent the wheel if there's yeah. 
a library or you know something available to do that might as well yeah. use it yeah 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 kritika i th- uh, is it time for coder squatro or we have some some questions before that i mean something we can some can you tell us like something about yourself that not a lot of people know <laughs> <laughs> i actually have a degree in chemistry is that count Wow, degree in chemistry. Yes, that counts. I didn't, yeah. didn't know that. Yeah, I have that. a degree wow. in chemistry. Yeah. Um, wow. Then, okay. So you yeah. did so, go to school like for chemistry, your bachelor's yeah. or whatever, and then you like switched into programming. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. I did. I did my degree, and then after that, I don't. You know, I don't really like to work in that field because yeah, it just IT is more fun. So I just yeah. like to teach myself, and I don't want to go back. to call it again so i just you know yeah. step forward yeah so i don't know how expensive you know education in malaysia is is it helped by the government or not like i know in india it can be a bit expensive depending on where you are what college you go to mm-hmm. and in canada usa it's super expensive so do you yeah. think that college is still worth it because a lot of people i see study something but then change or worse that they don't find a job and they don't even change so what are your opinion on that I actually did my degree in 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 Australia but not in Malaysia. Okay. Cuz nowadays there are way too many competitions compared to like 5 6 years ago. <clears throat> so you need to stand out. You need to do something different than all of your friends or those students to stand out. Be something great, you know, cuz most people they waste their time partying and and you know doing a lot of weird things in school. Yeah. And then after that they be like oh I can't find a job now like I I don't know cuz you know you have you're supposed to spend your college time you know improving yourself otherwise you will suffer 100% you will suffer after this. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely absolutely like you're on point people if you go to college or if you don't if you're self taught that doesn't matter the more important thing is that you stand out I think you perfectly nailed it because if you if everyone if 100000 people are going to college and there are only 5000 jobs available you have to have something special right you have to have your own projects be more social on linkedin and do something that others aren't doing because just having a piece of paper a degree companies maybe won't care about that right yeah, a lot of yeah. companies will still have that in their job description as a requirement but just having that degree won't help you so yeah. definitely i think yeah, you nailed it there yeah like if you have a chance to go to college for IT or the or an, another thing just go for it cuz that's a way better path for you you just have to work harder as well while you're studying in school don't waste your time so if you get a chance to go to school you have to i mean i mean Absolutely. it won't like, hurt going yeah. to school or university yeah. or college for yeah. it or i mean whatever field you're interested in yeah. and won't hurt for sure it's going to yeah. give you like the kind of exposure it's going to give you right you won't get yeah. it like outside of school and also yeah. the kind of discipline it introduces in your life because yeah. of the schedule that you have to follow yeah, yeah. a lot of people sense. say that if you're from stem like science technology engineering mm-hmm. maybe mathematics. Uh, mathematics medical all those fields definitely or if you want to become a lawyer definitely go to college university yeah. but if you're from other fields then maybe think more about it like what you what, what would you do in the end because yeah. i know i saw like there are a lot of people in us it's a big topic right now that people are doing you know liberal arts european art history course for you know 120000 spend 3 years of their life and then are surprised that they don't get any jobs in the end so i would say mm-hmm. technology is definitely one thing that is here to stay no matter chat gpt and ai so it's mm-hmm. always nice to learn a little bit programming and i also mm-hmm. say that maybe in schools schools should start teaching you know programming the basics at least html css a little bit to kids because i think it's definitely it's here to stay yeah it it's going to be like the future is all about technology not it's not going to change 20 years 25 years 30 years Perfect. So it's time for our final section of the podcast, which we like to call Coders Quattro, because these are the four same questions that we ask all our guests. So it's kind mm-hmm. of like a rapid fire uh, round. So you can, mm-hmm. I mean, uh, answer with whatever comes fastest, fastest or the first in <laughs> mind. So you ready? <laughs> okay. Okay. 
So let's start. The first one is, we'll start with an easy one. What's your favorite programming language slash framework? Python, fast FPA. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> and, we already, really fast. <laughs> and we already know the reason why, so <laughs> we will not go to that into that again. So next question, which programming language or framework would you recommend to a new programmer to start with? If their goal is to find a job, especially. JavaScript. JavaScript. Easy but, to find a job. Yeah. Okay, perfect. JavaScript, and that's our most popular answer, by the way. Like yeah. almost all the guests, they, they say JavaScript. Yeah. Okay, and the third one is, how long do you think generative AI such a, well, actually, we've already covered this question. So I'm gonna <laughs> skip this one. Yeah, the question was that, how, how long do you think that generative AI or you know, chat GPT will take to replace our to jobs, to replace exactly. our Exactly, so we've already covered You already this said already. 10, 10, 10, 15 years. So <laughs> we, we are opening our savings account and we are putting money away, Kritika, every single check yeah. so that in 15 years we can retire. Be ready, you know? Yes. <laughs> Okay, cool. So, so the last question, what's your favorite tech or non-tech non-fiction book? One tech and one non-tech. Snow, Snow Crash. It's a non it's a fiction. Okay. And then the, the three body problems, you know, it's a sci-fi. I love sci-fi books in terms of like non-fictions, the lean startup. The, the lean, lean startup. startup that is in yeah. my in my you know reading list i haven't read it yet but so many people have said it's a nice book and is it is it about devops and more about that it's about startup it's about like how to launch your product as quick as possible awesome yeah. was that your that. inspiration i <laughs> was that your inspiration yeah because <laughs> yeah because most most of us would be just like we will wait and wait to launch the, the, the thing. So I think it's a good idea. So, yeah. Absolutely. Lean Startup, I'm going to add a link to that awesome book in the description below. And uh, yeah, all great choices. Awesome. So yeah, we're done with the final section. So, I mean, thank you very much. We, we enjoyed talking with you. And now we're going to open the floor to you. So if you want to talk about anything or if you want to give an advice, you know, like give any advice to the new beginners and ML or programming. Yeah. So or ask us any questions if you have. Or, any. Yeah, if you have any questions for us. Okay, now I will have to ask the question back to you guys. What is your favorite <laughs> languages and framework? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Language for me, JavaScript, hands down. I'm going to so, stick with JavaScript as well, yeah. Yeah. And the truth is, we actually started with Java in school, because I mean, when we were in our bachelor's and master's at the time. Yeah. <laughs> so Java yeah. is what they used to teach mm -hmm. to build logics and to learn programming. So mm -hmm. we started with Java. But I mean, Prana still works in Java. So yeah. but when we started like, learning, <laughs> learning JavaScript was like, totally like life changing for me, honestly, because mm -hmm. of like, how fast I could adapt it probably because I was already familiar with programming because I already did Java, maybe because of that. But I mean, yeah. honestly, it's very easy to learn. Mm -hmm. And also you can do a lot of things with JavaScript. And there is like, and with Node.js, you have so many libraries available. Yeah. You don't like, I love the concept of like how NPM works and how there are so many libraries okay. to do different things so that you mm -hmm. don't have to like build, worry about these, you know, side yeah. things and building logic. And you can actually focus on the, the code of your application, the mm -hmm. main logic, right? Yeah. So, yeah. I, I mean, think I'm going to choose JavaScript and the framework would be Node.js and Angular. Angular in the front end, Node.js in the, in the back end. I feel try React. I have tried React and I actually like React a lot. A lot of people are, you know, always fighting is React better or Angular better, but I always end up choosing Angular because it has so many inbuilt features, like mm -hmm. inbuilt libraries, like you said, it's good for enterprise, right? So it yeah. comes with routing, it comes with the security mechanisms. So I don't have to find other libraries to work with. So I kind of like that. So that's why yeah. you usually end up uh, with Angular, but uh, I've used React, I used it for more than six months when I was working for, for another startup. And it was, it was a nice experience, but Angular mm -hmm. for me is more structured. Yeah, they have got every single thing you need in one place, right? 
exactly exactly yeah. last question for you guys so okay. what is your favorite <laughs> fiction and non fiction because i love books? to read any yes fiction well yeah. i read this book it's so i'm reading this right now and it's by far like one of the best books i'm reading it's called mm-hmm. the shiva trilogy oh so you shouldn't have said that it was going to be mine no no <laughs> Oh, I mean, no. we can have the same choice. It's okay. All right. So, like, it has three parts, and yeah. Shiva, if you don't know, is basically a god in Hindu mythology, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, in in our religion, he's he's supposed to be a god. But like in this book, the writer has described this god as a normal human being. So, and how you know, like, his life was so intriguing, like the actions, uh-huh. his his like. i mean his habits and stuff and how like it affected the people around him it's so like well narrated i'll say so there's three parts i am at the first one right now yeah we are at uh, you are at meluha meluha say, that is my yeah. favorite and it's it's not religious at all like if anyone reads it you will you are going to enjoy it's like an adventurous and you know action filled mm. book if you write, if if you like those so it's kind of a fiction yes book. so yes. so What's same answer for both of us <laughs> It's the first book is called Meluha M E L U H A the second one is the Nagas I think N A G A S But once, once you find the first one you will be easy Yeah you'll find the... yeah it's actually a trilogy and the third oh. one has a very weird name I won't be able to pronounce it <laughs> <laughs> Yeah I I I saw that here I'll have a look at that cuz um I love fiction as well Oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and also so yeah you asked non fiction yeah i'll let pranav take this okay first. okay so so i really liked welding like rabbits it is a it's it's more like a financial kind of a book which which teach you basic finance but i really liked it welding like rabbits and if you're talking about technical books i am I, i'm loving cracking the coding into you <laughs> yeah it's it, it's a classic and like as you said right if i go Uh, see a youtube video maybe i won't get what i'm looking for and in this book i i find everything so a uh, finance so two technical would be mm-hmm. cracking the coding interview and then welding like rabbits it basically yeah, teaches yeah. you that how quickly rabbits reproduce <laughs> because of <laughs> compound interest and oh, that's a, yes so that's yeah. the that's analogy. the analogy it yeah. uses yeah. with money and which is true. Yeah, that's the way to get rich as well. Compound interest, compounding. Exactly. Yep. Yes. <laughs> Time and compound interest, and I mean, you reset. Yeah. Yep. For Good me, book. yeah, it was a, it was a great book. He read it first, and then he recommended it, so I read it too. And mm-hmm. actually, that's how we started our investment journey in Canada. We'll say because yeah. this book is like by a Canadian author, and it's very specific to like investment and you know like the finance sector in Canada. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it was and a since very- then, like we started getting a bit extreme, and it depends <laughs> on everyone's everyone's you know where where you are and how much uh, money you need. But we started investing like fifty percent of our salary for months. and oh. we are still doing it today like we yeah. we are like no matter what you make 50% is to be invested L- yeah. let, let's see what happens i'm glad we didn't invest everything in bitcoin <laughs> <laughs> no way please don't do that <laughs> no, no no we did not we did not do yeah. that <laughs> yeah i mean at at some point it was even 60% we we you know started and we got the taste of it and we really enjoyed it so mm-hmm. yeah and we still continue it so that's a good thing So yeah, as to some of my non-fiction, my favorite non-fiction would be like a self-help book which is a classic how to win friends and influence people. Yeah, that's that's But, the best. I mean, absolutely <laughs> love it because I'm anyways like I am a very, you know, like outgoing and a very extroverted yeah. person and I'm always like I'm a people's person so I love the art of negotiating the art of making friends to influence yeah. people and cuz like i switched into like the role of a project manager now cuz i was a developer before but now yeah. i'm a project manager so i love the idea of leading a team by influence you know and so i hate that like i <laughs> i am a kind of guy who's like i just want to be alone <laughs> i don't yeah. want to <laughs> <laughs> right when we i was so happy when uh, the apps like subway and tim hortons they started having mobile apps so that you can just order i was like so i don't have to go inside and talk to anyone i can yeah. just order that is so good <laughs> classic programmer <laughs> you see that's the <laughs> I mean but anyways he, he you didn't used to anyways because like every time yeah. we go out he's like okay 
you know what he used to tell me his order and he would be like yeah. okay you can order for me as well <laughs> so, he's a programmer that's why yeah. exactly he and tech <laughs> exactly and he's reporting like whatever he wants to his project manager so that the project <laughs> Oh wow. <laughs> yeah. That's the perfect analogy. Anyways, yeah. you know, it's, it's... this is true story. I know I, I know we are taking more your more time but this is a true story. We were working for the same company and then she got promoted to a project manager so she was my manager for a couple of months. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, well, but then he quit the company. <laughs> oh, because you <he> <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that happened and then he quit he yeah. found another job wow. <laughs> he couldn't like the, handle like, like the they, same boss they know at home they, they, like they know you are like couple yeah, or they don't know yeah, yeah, they, knew about they, it, yeah. they knew about it yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he <laughs> couldn't like... handle the same boss you know in both the house and work <laughs> so... mm-hmm. <laughs> wow that's very interesting <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, it was uh, very nice having you here with us, Shree. It really felt like we are just having, we are just talking to another uh, another friend in Montreal. Like it's it's really nice. Thank you for answering all your all our questions, and really glad yeah, we, was, we did this. It was fun. It didn't feel like we're talking to you for the first time. It felt so natural. Really good. Yeah, yeah. Like I love to talk to you guys. So you guys are like friendly and stuff. So just a chatting. Why not? Right? And it's morning Absolutely. here. <laughs> it is now True. 10 it 10 is. 20 p.m so we are yeah. probably gonna maybe go for a walk and then sleep yeah yeah, yeah. get ready for monday get ready oh, for yes. monday yes, yes. Okay. oh we have to go to office tomorrow Kritika. it's not a work from home day so we also <laughs> work from home nice best thing ever <laughs> but yeah, tomorrow we but... have to go I'll have to not anymore to yeah we used to have like a hundred percent work from home like yeah. three months ago until three months ago uh-huh. but now they have a return to work policy so it's more like a mix and match three days in yeah. the office two days work from home kind of thing yeah i think it happens to all of the like most of the companies nowadays that yeah exactly that's true yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. and yeah uh, again like uh, also all the very best once again with your startup right uh, i think what you do what you are doing what you have explained it sounds like a great problem solver for content creators and we are definitely going to use it just let us know ping us and uh, also like and soon we will add a link to in our description to your instagram channel to your company if you want anything let us know again it's very awesome to have you and thank you very much yeah thanks for having me thank you thank you for the time and everyone please subscribe to our channel and also to shari's instagram